Good morning to all of you and welcome to our benefit service here on Trinity Sunday. It's wonderful to welcome you all on such a bright, sunny, summery day. Trinity Sunday. Last week at Pentecost, the church discovered what it was to be a church with the arrival of the Holy Spirit. And today we discover what it is to be part of God's story as we delve into the identity and personality of God. Today is the day that we handle all those amazing analogies. <coughs> Clover leaves, three in one. Ice cubes, water, steam. Or my particular favourite, triple action stripe toothpaste. How <laughs> <laughs> do they get the stripes in that tube? It's a mystery as big as God himself, and we are celebrating that mystery today. I want to draw your attention to the news sheet just briefly. There is plenty written down that I'm not going to repeat right now. Please do have a look at all the events upcoming in our church family. But just to mention a couple of things. One is that tomorrow the Bible study group, the Benefits Bible study group, will be meeting at Jenny Clifton's house at 2.15 in the afternoon. It's usually meeting on the first and third Sundays. And I always Mondays, Mondays. Mondays. I've got Sunday on the brain. <laughs> there we go. Every day should be a Sunday. <laughs> First and third Mondays of the month. And it's a wonderful way of exploring our Christian discipleship and what it means to travel with God. Uh, so do please uh, catch myself or somebody that you recognise to find out more about it if you want to know this bit more. The other is that on Friday here at St Nicholas Church we had a fantastic event where Emily Wrigley was able to uh, come and share some of her singing expertise for us and Richard Bush was playing alongside and uh, a wonderful event was held which was to raise a bit of money for the church here and also for the charity Versus Arthritis uh, which is a, a charity looking after people's needs with that condition. £800 or more was raised at that event, £500 of which would be going to St Nicholas and £300 to the Charity Versus Arthritis. So we really want to extend our warm thanks to Emily for the voice that she has nurtured through her young life so far and everything that she has brought to that event. And uh, we look forward to hearing more from her as she builds her career and her life going forwards. So just thought I'd like to share that with you, a little bit of wonderful news there. Our service this morning. We'll be starting with a hymn as we stand together. If you're able, we turn to number 237 in the church hymn books to sing Holy, Holy, Holy.
contain one in the church's green service book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. <coughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are open, and from whom the secrets are open, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us now confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commands and to live in love and peace with all. We sit or kneel to pray. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive for what we have been. Help us to remain in what we are, and to regret what we shall be. That we may do justly, love and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand to sing the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord of God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of Father, Lord God, Man of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So now we turn to the front of our new sheets to pray together the Collect Prayer for Trinity Sunday, the prayer for the others, all our thoughts into one. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds to knowledge of your truth. And draw us all deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please do sit for the Bible.
Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as his counsellor has instructed him? Who did he consult for his enlightenment, and who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide enough fuel, nor are its animals <coughs> enough for burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> we now stand to sing our gospel hymn together. It's number 130 in the church. Trinity 
has no practical consequences for humanity at all. And yet we've just heard one of the Gospels for Trinity Sunday, and that's the only place in any of the Gospels where Father, Son and Holy Spirit are linked. And in churches all over the country, newly arrived curates, visiting preachers and lay ministers are doing their best to preach about it. What might they say? Analogies such as Patrick and the Shamrock. Warnings of the damage that arguments about the Trinity have caused the church over the centuries, including a split between Eastern and Western churches which are still not healed. I've preached on Trinity Sunday several times, I'm not sure quite how many, starting nearly nine years ago. And I've included, included all of those ideas and others at one time or another. But I'm inclined to agree with Kant that discussing the Trinity does not really help anybody. Helping is what I hope to do today as I try to do every time I've preached. And it's likely that Matthew has included a formula which was used in baptism in the early church. And I want to unpick those few words as they could relate to us here and now. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Baptizing. What is baptism? The Jews used it when someone converted. And of course John the Baptist also saw it as a new beginning. But when Jesus was baptised at the River Jordan, it became a sign of membership, of being part of God's plan. And that's been the case ever since. When anyone is baptised, there's a welcome into the community of the church. But there's even more than that. I'm old enough to remember the Catechism. When I was at primary school, we were expected to learn chunks of it. And there it says about baptism, wherein I was made a child of God and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. So baptism is about the present, being a child of God, and about the future, inheriting the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, I looked at some of this when I preached on John 17 a couple of weeks ago, so apologies to anyone here from St Martin's who may remember some of what I said. In those verses, the first few verses of John chapter 17, Jesus claims for himself the powers of the Father, which is roughly what glorify means, and then shares them with his friends. The Father is always described, we've just been singing about it, as a creator. And it's those creative powers which have been shared over the ages. In the Enlightenment period, which I think is probably the period of Immanuel Kant among others, there was a philosophy called deism, that God existed, but having created the world, left it to get on with it. No. God is involved in the world he made, even though it can sometimes be very hard to find an answer to the question, where is God in all this, when we consider natural disasters or evils such as the Holocaust. In the name of the Son, in the early church it was usually baptised in the name of Jesus alone. And again, it's using, it's joining rather, what Jesus has done and still does. In one of the common Trinity formulas, he's described as Redeemer. He was sent to free people from sin, which is the message that the New Testament <coughs> stresses from start to finish, uh, particularly the letters of Paul and others. In Romans chapter 8, Paul writes, through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. 
And then later in the same chapter, Paul tells us the second way in which we share in the work of Christ. Christ is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us, speaking up for us. In a few moments, we should be directing our prayers to God the Father in the name of the Son. It's another example of past and future. And then in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now in the past there's been danger here. I referred earlier to the ability of the church to split. The term baptism in the Spirit was described as something necessary for Christians and shown principally by speaking in tongues. Last week we heard the list of the gifts of the Spirit, which Paul includes in 1 Corinthians. Tongues actually comes quite low in the list and is linked, as it must be, with interpretation. I'm not going much further with that, other than to say that this is another example of the ability of Christian communities to tear themselves apart. Unless someone's spoken in tongues, they're not really a Christian. It's been said, it's been thought, it's been, I'm sure, preached. Uh, and I have to say that a useful corrective to that is Acts chapter 10, where the Holy Spirit came first before baptism. But then in the formula I referred to, Creator, Redeemer, the Spirit is termed Sanctifier. The Spirit keeps us holy on the right lines sometimes quite firmly. As someone has written, the Spirit can be an uncomfortable comforter. I found this especially when I've been struggling with the passage I'm preaching on. At its extreme, the Spirit will send the sermon in a direct, completely new direction, which I hadn't really thought about when I started. And we are all baptised into that, if we're prepared to listen and respond. Now I'm well aware that anyone dealing with the Trinity, and particularly in this way, risks sounding as though there are three persons. You may have noticed, it's partly showing respect for my first vicar as a lay reader, that I begin, Almighty God who is, not are. The Book of Common Prayer Collect for Trinity Sunday helps us further. You have given your servants grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Put another way, Trinity sums up everything we can understand <coughs> about the phrase God is love. And so it's worship. That's what this comes down to. Amen. <coughs> we turn to page four in our service book. We stand together and we affirm our faith in the God who loves us and helps us to worship Him as Father, Son, and Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. It's the only God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the 
Living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are a can do God of positivity, positive, positivity and power, and entrust to you our fragmented world, so vulnerable and so drained by negativity. We pray today for the people of Ukraine and of Russia, of Turkey, and Syria, of Israel and Palestine, of Serbia and the Balkans. <coughs> we pray for the continent of Africa, for the people of our own nation and all places in the world that are on our hearts where there is division, hardship, climatic challenges, and suffering. Empower the peacemakers. Resource the aid workers. And unite us all with the courage to believe that together we can make a difference. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for young people sitting exams and making career choices that they might feel positive about their abilities and about themselves and share their aspirations and create creativity and beauty with their little corner of the world. Father, empower their teachers and mentors, resource their schools and places of learning and unite us with all the courage to believe that together we can make a difference. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for one another, our families, our friends, our church, our community as we live out the adventure you have called us each you have called each of us on with the challenges and opportunities the privileges and responsibilities we remember especially those who are ill those who are grieving those who have lost their homes those who are struggling to fit in Father, empower those in positions of influence Resource those who are carers, encouragers, and providers. And unite us all with the courage to believe that together we can make a difference. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the work of our parish. May we, Father, be 
a living beacon to those who we serve. And may we be empowered by your spirit to do your work here in our charitable benefits. Merciful Father, accept the service for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. If you are able, let us stand together. We turn to page six to share the peace. <coughs> we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And your first let us offer one another a sign of that peace. <laughs>
We are on page 7 in the service book. All people are welcome before the table of the Lord here in our church at St. Nicholas today. If today, instead of the bread and the wine, you prefer to receive a blessing, please do let me know at the moment of distribution. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Please be seated. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So we fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord, God, God of our hearts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Those have been in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name. who in the same way that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. <coughs> he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you that. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ is come again. And so, Father, all his mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting this worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Nicholas, St. Martin, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, whatever and ever. <coughs> Turning to page 12, let us now pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. 
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
the words of the post communion prayer. Almighty and
strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all whom you carry in your hearts this day and all Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.